Question 1a asks us to relate a physical pendulum's motion to the magenta trajectories. For each of these, I will provide a GIF which illustrates a physical pendulum and a trajectory in phase space. But I'll answer the question using the phase space portrait so that you can get familiar with this powerful representation. The first option is that the pendulum never becomes inverted, but this cannot be the case. Notice that each magenta trajectory passes through theta equals minus pi and pi, which is the unstable fixed points. Because it passes through the unstable fixed points, we know at some point in time the pendulum has to become inverted and this answer cannot be correct. Notice also that each magenta trajectory also passes through theta equals zero. In fact, it's the case that the magenta trajectories have theta values of both even and odd multiples of pi. This means that the pendulum arm regularly passes by both the stable and unstable fixed points. So the second answer is correct. For part b, we need to characterize the blue trajectories. First notice that for all the blue trajectories, the angular velocity, or the omega coordinate, is constantly changing. The fact that the angular velocity is not equal to zero for all time means that the pendulum is in fact moving, and the pendulum never moves cannot be the answer. Now notice on the theta axis, that each of the blue trajectories is bound between, but not touching, minus pi to pi. This means that the blue trajectories never pass through the unstable fixed point. Another way of saying this is the pendulum never becomes inverted. This makes the first answer wrong and the second answer correct. So the answer to this question is the pendulum never becomes inverted. Part C and D ask us to classify the red and black dots as stable or unstable fixed points. The black dot corresponds to a pendulum in this position. Notice that theta is equal to zero, so the pendulum is in the bottom position, and omega is also equal to zero, so the pendulum is not moving. We know from lecture that this fixed point is stable. In the undamped pendulum, this is called an elliptic fixed point. We'll learn much more about this in unit four. For the red dots, notice that theta is an odd multiple of pi. That means the pendulum is in this position. Also notice that omega is zero, so the pendulum is not moving. We know from lecture and real life that this pendulum is unstable. Even blowing on this pendulum would cause the pendulum to fall over. This type of fixed point is referred to as a hyperbolic fixed point or a saddle point. We'll learn much more about this type of fixed point in unit four. For these reasons, the black dot is a stable fixed point and the red dots are unstable fixed points. Part E asks how the trajectories in the state space figure would change if damping was introduced. This is equivalent to asking how would these trajectories change if this is a real world pendulum? Since in the real world, we have friction. In this example, all the parameters are same as the trajectories that were generated for the space based portrait, except that I have made the drag coefficient or the coefficient of friction equal to 0 0.5. The left hand pane shows a pendulum and the right hand pane will show a phase based portrait. As we would expect, the pendulum slows down. That is, our angular velocity decreases, so omega should be getting smaller and smaller. As the angular velocity decreases, the angle theta also decreases. Since both the angular velocity and the angular position are decreasing, the pendulum will spiral in to the stable fixed point at 0, 0. Notice that if adding friction caused the trajectories to spiral towards the unstable fixed points, that would mean if you let a pendulum go at pi over two, it would attract towards the inverted position rather than the hanging position. We all know this is not the case. From the video we just presented, we know that the answer is the trajectories that spiral towards the stable fixed point, which lines up with our intuition about real pendulums. With this in mind, if we were to regenerate this figure, but instead setting beta equal to 0 0.5, we would get the following state space portrait. This answers question four. The parameter we have to change is the coefficient of friction, or beta. 